So today we are going to map stoichiometry problems. So these are typically called three-step stoichiometry problems. And we're not going to solve them and get a number, but we're going to map it out and determine how to solve it. Okay? This is the place where I've seen most students get stuck. So before we do that, though, let's review our toolbox and the things that we have that we've learned already. So what was the very first thing that we learned? Yep, mole ratios, good. And that gets us from moles of one chemical to moles of another using the coefficients of the balanced reaction. What's the second thing we did? Molar mass, and that gets us from moles of one chemical back and forth to grams of that same chemical. And the very last thing on our toolbox is good, molar volume. And this gets us from moles of a chemical back and forth to liters of that same chemical as a gas at STP, okay? So there are instructions on how to do it. We're just gonna jump right into the example and do the instructions as we go, okay? So we are going to imagine that every chemical reaction are houses on Mole Street, okay? So your first thing that we're gonna do is box each of the chemicals because it's representing like a house on Mole Street. Okay, I know, I know, just roll with it, okay? So we've got moles on the street. That's the name of our street. And grams and liters on the roof. You could also do atoms or molecules on the roof also. All right, so now that we have our street set up, let's actually read the question. How many grams of magnesium would be required to produce 2.5 grams of magnesium oxide? So this is different because there's no moles in here at all, right? It's all grams of one thing to grams of another. And looking at our toolbox, we don't have anything that goes directly from grams of a chemical to grams of another. Okay, so that's why we're looking at this in terms of steps. So what are you given in the problem? Perfect, 2.5 grams of magnesium oxide, and what are we trying to find? Grams of magnesium. Okay, so here's how we're going to kind of label our Mole Street reaction. I'm starting with 2.5 grams of magnesium oxide. So above the magnesium oxide house, I'm going to write 2.5 grams. And today we're not solving and we're not gonna do sig figs for just mapping it out. And then I circled grams of magnesium because that's what I'm trying to find. So above the magnesium house, I'm gonna say G question mark because that is what I'm trying to find. Okay, there's no roof jumping. I can't roof jump, this is not parkour, all right? If I needed to go to a friend's house, I couldn't jump roofs to get there, I'd have to walk, yes? But if I'm on the roof, I have to get off the roof and climb, go to the street first. So it's the same kind of idea. So our very first step here in order to solve this problem is to go from the roof, meaning our grams, down to Mole Street. So we would have moles of MgO. That would be our very first step, is to get off the roof and to get down to Mole Street. So for A then, the first conversion is from grams of MgO to moles of MgO. This is this first step, it's that first conversion. Now if we look at our toolbox, which tool do we have that gets us from grams of a chemical to moles of that same chemical? Molar mass. So I would use the molar mass in order to solve this problem, this first conversion. That step is familiar, you've done that. Okay, now let's keep going, am I done? Did I solve the, the problem? 
No, because it's asking me for grams of magnesium. So just like in my real world example, I'd have to walk on the street to my friend's house. So I'm gonna walk on Mole Street over to moles of magnesium. So my second conversion then is on Mole Street, going from moles of MGO to moles of MG. I'm doing each piece in steps. Okay, so looking at the toolbox, which one gets us from moles of a chemical to moles of the other chemical? The mole ratio, which we know comes from the coefficients of the balanced reaction. Okay, I'm almost done, yeah? Almost done. I'm in front of the mole of mag. I'm on Mole Street in front of Magnesium House. Now I gotta climb to the roof. So my last step is going from moles of magnesium to grams of magnesium. Looking at our toolbox, what's the tool that combines um, moles and grams? Molar mass. Okay, but look, we are using molar mass in two places. Is this going to be the same number? No. MGO, we're using the molar mass of MGO, which would be 40.31 grams per mole. But here in the third conversion, the third step, we're doing the molar mass of just MG. It's a different chemical. So this would be 24.31 grams per mole. So yes, we're using the same tool, but it's not gonna be the same number because our molar masses are different because we have different chemicals. So if we were going to solve this problem, okay, this question, this original question, to go from 2.5 grams of magnesium oxide to find grams of magnesium, I would do three steps. My first one would be convert to moles of MgO. My second would be the use the mole ratio to solve for moles of Mg. And then the last one would be use the molar mass of Mg to solve for grams. Okay, this is the steps that you would take to solve it. Let's do another one. Okay, let's look at uh, the second example. First things first, draw your houses. We've got magnesium house, oxygen house, MgO house, magnesium oxide. Moles are on the street and grams and liters are on the roof. If you were solving for atoms or molecules using uh, Avogadro's number, you could put that on the roof also. So here's the question. How many liters of oxygen gas at STP will be needed to react with 15 grams of magnesium metal? Okay, what are you giving? Perfect, and what are you trying to find? liters of oxygen, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna put on my map here what I'm given. So 15 grams of magnesium is on the roof of Magnesium House. And I'm looking for liters of oxygen. So liters and then a question mark. Okay, again, no roof jumping. We don't have anything that takes us directly from grams of one substance to liters of another. So we're gonna have to do this in steps. So the very first step would be to get off the roof, yeah? So we're gonna go down to Mole Street. Mole magnesium. So my first conversion is going to be going from grams of magnesium to moles of magnesium. So what do we have in the toolbox that gets us between grams and moles? Molar mass. Are we done? Nope, because that's not what the question asks, right? So now I'm gonna walk along Mole Street and I'm gonna walk myself to mole of oxygen. So right in front of Oxygen House. So my second conversion will be from moles of magnesium going to mole of O2. 
And what do we have in the toolbox that gets us between moles of one chemical to moles of another? Mole ratio, which comes from the coefficients of the balanced reaction. All right, am I done? What do I need to do? Climb the roof, climb to the roof. So my last conversion is going from moles of O2 up to liters of O2. And what tool do we have in the toolbox that goes from moles of liters of a gas? Molar volume. We've done each of these individually and now we're just putting them together in order to solve the problem so that we could actually you know, run this reaction in a lab with things we can measure. Let's do number one, and then you'll have an opportunity to practice. So again, I'm going to box up my houses. I've got moles on the street and grams and liters on the roof. Here's the question. What mass of oxygen would be needed to react completely with 11.8 grams of C2H6? What are you given? Perfect, of C2H6. And what are you trying to find? Okay, mass. What unit is that? Grams. Okay, good. So I'm going to write 11.8 grams above C2H6 and I'm going to say G question mark on top of the oxygen house because that's what I'm trying to find. All right, here we go. No roof jumping. So what do you do? Go down to Mole Street. So first step, go to moles. So my first conversion is from grams of C2H6 to moles of C2H6. And what do we have in our toolbox that goes between grams and moles? Molar mass. Oh, hey, real quick, go back and look at A for the first two. What did we do every time? It's the, the tool we used is the molar mass, but didn't we get to the mole every time? So your first step on stoichiometry problems is always going to be to get to the mole. Because remember, the mole is the equalizer. It's what allows us to compare numbers, right? Okay, so now I'm in moles of C2H6. Now what? Walk on over to Oxygen House. So my second conversion is from mole of C2H6 to mole of O2. And what do we have in our toolbox that gets from moles of one chemical to moles of another? Molar ratio. Oh, hey, look at C for all of them. What are we doing in that middle step? Converting to moles of the other thing using the mole ratio. Do you, are you noticing a pattern? Okay, last conversion. What do I do? Good. Mole of O2. To grams of O2, I'm climbing the roof. And what tool is moles and grams? Molar mass. Now, these are not the same molar masses, right? One is the molar mass of C2H6, and the other is the molar mass of O2, but it's the tool that gets us between grams and moles. So again, we're not actually solving with this, but this strategy will work. Now look, hold up. Let's say it's just a one-step problem. It's just asking you to go from, say, moles to grams. You could still do this. You could still map it out, and it will get you the right answer. It's a strategy that shows you what you need to do with your units, okay? Or if it's a two-step. What if I said go from grams of C2H6 to moles of O2? You could still map this out. This is a strategy that will work when solving any of your stoichiometry problems. Okay, and the steps are at the top, so just think about your toolbox and what steps you need to do.
to map it out in order to solve stoichiometry problems.